For this video, I'm using a bunch of products from my Ipsy Glam Bag for November, and I'm actually really obsessed with this Glam Bag. It goes with my nails. How cute is that? And it's in the color yellow slash mustard. As you can tell by this theme, like my shirt is yellow, my backdrop is now yellow as well. I'm about it. So I'm just gonna be using some of my products from my clam bag and I'm also gonna be answering some questions that you guys left on my Instagram. So let's do this. I received these tan oil drops yesterday and as I was applying on my body, I didn't see a difference at all and I've never done self tanning whatsoever. I don't know why. I decided to reach for the box and started squirting all over my body and applying it everywhere. But I woke up this morning and look, look what happened to my hands. <laughs> it's kind of dumb and funny at the same time. I really like this question. It's from Funkadelic Jess. What pushed you to follow your dreams? Like how did you find the confidence and strength to do something out of your comfort zone? I think there's always been something in me that pushed me to be more of a dreamer than a realistic person. There's a difference between people who just sit around all day and dream about what they wish they could do with their life versus actually doing something about it. And what pushed me to start my YouTube channel was really because I did not like my job when I, uh, when I first graduated out of college. I stayed there for three months. I really tried my best to stick it out, but I remember just sitting there every day at my Yelp desk. By the way, I'm not hating on Yelp. It just wasn't for me. Um, I remember sitting there and I remember looking outside my window every day, making my cold calls and wishing that I could be outside and doing the things I love and spending my time the way I want to spend it. And I remember I would sit there at my desk and think about all the video ideas that I could be filming. And after three months of being there, I know that if I really, really try my best in a creative field, I just knew inside me that I would do well if I tried my hardest. Me and Sandy kind of have this saying that if it keeps you past 2 a.m. and you're doing that thing when you're not getting paid for it, that's most likely something that you freaking love and that's something that you most likely should pursue. Success definitely comes to you when your passion is real, people can see it, it's contagious, and the passion is going to fight through any of the hardships that make you want to quit. That's what keeps you going. If you love what you're talking about, you're just gonna want to keep doing it for years and years and years and years. Nicola Rule asks, what is your favorite country to visit? I have to say Japan. Every time I go to Japan, I feel like I'm in a whole new world. I feel like it's like a video game. It's so different from anything that I've ever visited. Like even though it's an Asian culture and I'm Chinese, Japanese culture is just so different and everything there's so clean. Everyone is so polite there. It's just really pleasant. I miss it. I really want to go back to it. The one thing I love about Japan is everyone walks around in their own style and nobody looks at them strangely. Everyone just can express themselves the way they want to with their clothes. Fairy Faye asks, what do you like most about yourself? The one thing I like most about myself is my inability to stay mad at people. I am such a forgetful person. It really helps when there's something to be mad about. Like that fuse only lasts so long because I am able to have a pretty positive mindset and move forward from that situation. Let the steam wear off a little bit. Keep looking forward in a positive way. Tessa Noreen asks, what is your favorite app right now? I think this is a pretty easy one. I love Instagram. So I live on Instagram, I'm always on my stories, scrolling through my feed. Going overboard 99 asks, are you excited about BTS and the AMAs? Mm-hmm, I got tickets to go. This blush color is so pretty. I really like it. Cafe I de Gal asks, how did you meet Ivan Ba? Ivan Ba. I met Ivan through James from the Miju Van Salon. He's an eyelash specialist and he does eyelash extensions. And they were really sweet and they asked me if I wanted to get my eyelashes done. Ivan and I just had a really good conversation. That's kind of how we met. We, we found out like I'm really into the Myers-Briggs test and we found out that both of us we're both ENFPs. I was like, I feel like we are just on the same wavelength of understanding. Oh, and the color I'm using right now is called Come and Get It by ColourPop. I'm gonna use this color called Paper Tiger also from ColourPop. It's like this really pretty yellow, like a mustard yellow matte color. Elish Kerr asks, one thing you don't like that everybody loves, ice cream and chocolate. 
I don't really have a sweet tooth in me. I love spicy foods, salty, savory chips. As the Kawaii Kitty asks, are you planning to grow your hair? I love you so much, Karen. I love you too. The answer to that is yes. I am planning to grow this baby out. I'm planning for it to stay dark. I'm probably not gonna change my hair color for a bit now because it's been through a lot the past couple years. I feel like it's time for a change for me, but then again, I change my mind all the time, so who knows? The plan is to grow it out and have it maybe go down to here. Anna Tai asks, what's your Chinese name? In Cantonese is Yuan Po Yan. In Mandarin is Yang Bei Xin. Question, next question. Lovely Lele asks, do you edit your own videos? If so, how did you learn to? Um, I think I answered the second part of the question earlier, but yes, I do edit my videos. Very rare on occasions, Leo helps me edit, but that's very rare. And it's like if I'm overwhelmed with editing and I, I need to push content out, then he'll help me out with editing my talking makeup videos. Um, Alexis W.XO asks, what other K-pop groups do you like aside from BTS? I like Blackpink a lot. But I honestly try not to get too deep into the world of K-pop because it took my life for a couple months and I'm gonna pat down my face with some HD Perfecting Powder by Manica Dar Beauty and this is in an e.l.f. beauty sponge. I love this guy by the way. I have been really into listening to IU and therefore I had my IU inspired makeup tutorial um, and lately Sandy was showing me a bunch of like yesterday, Sandy showed me a bunch of Dean videos and man, Dean is good looking and he has a good sense of style and he has an amazing voice. So I, I mean, they're not K-pop groups per se, but they got some good music, man. I'm going to highlight my face with the Lancome Dual Finish Highlighter and the brush I'm using. Oh, how cute. It's an Ipsy and SL Miss Glam B36 Tapered Highlight Brush. This highlight is magical, by the way. Wow. I really like this brush too. It does a really good job highlighting. I'm going to be using the Lisa Frank and Glamour Dolls Bitten and Bronze Matte Bronzer. I always like to add some to my hairline. Pinto Beans 8 asks, what camera do you use to film? So the one I have right now is a GH4 by Panasonic and the lens I have is 12 to 35 focal length. Okay, so j.ngx asks, what is something you do to keep yourself from brief? What is something that you do to keep yourself from being stressed? Whenever, whenever I'm stressed, lately I find that I just want a really good meal. That's a bad thing to do. But another thing that I do when I'm stressed out is watch videos on Vimeo, Hulu, or Netflix just to deflate. Another thing I do to distress is like, I like to draw and I bought a notebook recently and I started doodling in there and I find that like coloring my drawings really helps me too. Cleaning up the living space around me because I find that usually when I'm stressed out it's because I am around a huge mess and the mess clutters my mind and it doesn't help thoughts flow. Another thing I've been doing actually is listening to talks on YouTube. So last weekend, I went to church with Cassie, Richie, and Jen. And I don't know, recently I've just been finding that going to church has been very therapeutic. I think Carl Lentz was a speaker. And from my knowledge, he is Justin Bieber's mentor. So he's like a celebrity pastor, I think. Now I'm not too sure. So check your sources. Don't listen to just what I say. So I went home and went on YouTube and I wanted to share with Sandy the message that I saw that day and I ended up finding and I put, put it on my TV and we were watching it for like 45 minutes or something like that. And the message was so good. I wrote a summary out to Sophia. Even if you're not religious, you can still take away, like there's so, so many good messages in a sermon that you can take away with. So the sermon was about turning the page and rather than pointing the fingers at others to see the change, we need to point the finger back to ourselves and be the change that we wanna see. I think it's so easy to blame other people when we're upset and when we're hateful because naturally 
We don't want to be the source of why we're mad. It just feels better to blame other people. God doesn't give us what we want, but he gives us what we need. And oftentimes we want what we want, like a child wants what we what they want. And when, oh my God, Leo. I want to kiss you. Bye. Bye. And when we don't get what we want from God, we get bitter like children. We assume that God is not there with us because he's not doing what we want him to do in our lives and giving bitterness up so that we can be better. Yeah, so I mean like if you're not religious, you can just take away the parts that you want to take away. But lately I find that listening to these religious talk sermons have helped de-stress me too and I find that it kind of recenters me so that rather than just focusing on my problems and making them bigger than they are in my head, I can see the bigger picture. Sipway asks, how did you begin to start your clothing brand? How did you come up with your designs and execute the process? I have a few ideas of designs and I'm curious about how to go about it. The way I see it starting a clothing brand is it's another platform for me to express my individuality and what inspires me. With that in mind, everything that I create has a story that behind it that came from my creative soul. Before I get too deep into it, I'm gonna grab a lip liner though. And I'm gonna be using this lip liner by Jean Blue. It's a pretty color. This is a part as a creative designer is that you have to kind of dig deep into what inspires you and for me i'm a very nostalgic person and so i'm inspired by what made me happy when i was a child the next drop that i have for like spring summer the colors are very elementary and what i like to do during my creative process is i have these sheets of vinyl vinyl colors that i can potentially use in my clothes and I just lay it all out, place it next to each other, and see what color patterns I can play with. That's like more, more along the lines of the second step. The first step is coming up with a concept that really resonates with my nostalgia. That's kind of how the t-shirt nostalgia came about actually. I was really inspired by my childhood back when I was in the 90s, and the font nostalgia is very vintage looking and i put the chinese text underneath it because i was raised in hong kong as a child um, up until i was eight years old so a lot of my childhood memories are very chinese oriented and so i wanted to put that element into the clothes that i was making the font also with the text is very reminiscent of is that how you say the word? The ladies that would work at the food stands and they would kind of wear these very plain tops that wrote exactly what they are. And I thought that I would bring that element into fashion. This line of clothes that I have dropping is inspired by youth and how youth is fleeting. It's also inspired by one of my favorite films, In the Mood for Love. The title of In the Mood for Love in Chinese is Fa Yang Lin Wa, and that actually means fleeting youth. You might also see those texts, the four letter words, um, in a BTS album like back. So it's a four character word that's commonly used in Chinese to describe how youth is fleeting and kind of like how youth is wasted on the young. Now that I am 27 years old, I am, I'm stepping into my closer to my 30s and it's starting to make me reevaluate and think about what youth means to me. I'm gonna let that pass and put on a lip color. I'm gonna use this one from M Cosmetics. <sighs> Why is this so loud? And it's in the color Rose Nude. And then I'm just gonna set my makeup with the Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 Prime Set and Refresh. Whoa, that was a strong spritz. Let me do it further away. Wow, this little guy is like powerful, man. But I actually really love this stuff. So I'm pretty happy that they have like a travel size. Okay, so now that you have your ideas, what inspires you, I start the design process on Photoshop. I only know how to use Photoshop. I don't know how to use Illustrator, but I know Illustrator is a better option. We recently just got a iron-on press machine. The cool thing is like, I have a bunch of blanks at my office right now and Leo knows how to print out the designs that I do on this on the vinyl cutter. We can create immediately a sample and I can try it on and like kind of get a feel of it and see if there's anything I need to change from it. I also designed this 
you can't really see it right now, but that's okay. It should be a surprise. But these are the colors that I laid out on the floor and I was like, ah, I like blue and pink and white. So let's put those together and create something that's meaningful to me. That's a really rough, messy explanation of my process right now. But to start your own clothing brand, it's honestly just about trying and trial and error because I swear to God, guys, this is like probably the 10th business that I've had and all of them have been obviously un unsuccessful because nobody has ever heard about it. But it's fun because like that's kind of how you learn to get better in the future. It's all about trial and error. So if you don't just sew something yourself, you'll never know what to do next. Oh, Jesse Lux asked a very heavy question. You have one day left to live. What would you do? I would for sure gather all of my loved ones and spend time with them like outdoors in the woods and just talk about memories that made us happy or create something together, like draw together if they want to. Just spend quality time. Quality time to me is like the, the pinnacle of having a good relationship is spending quality time. So I think that's what I would end up doing, just spending quality time with the people that I love. Three, four days since I washed my hair, so I'm gonna be using this dry shampoo by Orbe. It's their Goldless Dry Shampoo. Ugh. I don't know why that startles me every single time. Oh my gosh, this smells amazing. All right guys, I'm done with my makeup. This is kind of like what I do every day. Tell me a random fact about yourself actually. That way I get to know you guys more. And write your name, like your name and a random fact. That way I can get to know you guys a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching and I also want to just give another shout out for Ipsy and brand partners for making this video possible and for sponsoring these like really cute dainty sized products. If you guys like my video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to follow me, subscribe, follow me on my Instagram, all my other social media channels if you like me and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.